Hello YouTube! So, on my desk I have a Motley selection of ESP32 devices. We have a couple of standard dev boards, we have my custom PCB board, and we have a Helltech OLED based device. So I've downloaded a simple sketch onto these devices that just wires up the boot button as a general purpose button to turn the built-in LED on and off. So on the dev boards that's the blue light, on my custom board it's this bottom LED here and we'll see what happens on the OLED display when we push the button. So push the button, the LED has turned off but mysteriously the LEDs on the other boards have also turned off. So push the button again, the LED is on and the other LEDs are on. Let's try the other board. All the lights turn off, all the lights turn on. What kind of magic is this? We're using the ESP now in broadcast mode. So if we look at the OLED display, we can see there's a bunch of hexadecimal numbers. Now, if you examine these carefully, you'll see they're from different devices. So this is the MAC address of each device. So when I push the button, you can see a new message arrives and it says to turn the LEDs off. If I push this button, a new message arrives to turn the LEDs on. And they're coming from the two different devices. So each device is sending out a message to all the other devices and the other devices are receiving that message and acting upon it. So how does this work under the hood? Let's take a look at a simple code sample. So I've included the Wi-Fi header and I've included the ESP Now header. So let's jump down to the setup method. So we have the standard setting up the serial line. Then we need to activate the Wi-Fi module. If you don't do this, then ESP Now will um, crash with an error. And then we'll print out our MAC address. This will be useful when we do some peer-to-peer -peer transmission. And then we just disconnect the Wi-Fi from any base stations that it may be connected to. So now we can activate ESP Now. So we call the ESP Now init. And then we can register some callbacks. So a callback for receiving messages and a callback for when we have sent a message. So that's all you need to do to initialize ESP Now. So let's jump into our loop. So we read the built-in button. If the button is pushed, we toggle the LED and then we send a broadcast message to say turn the LEDs on or turn the LEDs off. So let's take a look at um, the broadcast function. So we create a broadcast address. So to broadcast an ESP now, you just send a message to a MAC address that has all the values set to 255. So we create a new peer info. We set the peer address to the broadcast address and then we register this new peer with the ESP Now system. Um, it's a little bit strange to have to register a broadcast peer, but if you don't do this, then you can't send messages to the broadcast address. So now we've registered the broadcast peer, we can simply call ESP Now Send. We send to the broadcast address and we just send our message and our message length. So that will either return ESP OK or there'll be an error message. Now you also get a callback on your sent callback. So this gives you the MAC address that the message was sent to and a status as well. So we can log out if the message was actually sent successfully. So that's sending messages. So it's, it's very simple. You add a peer and you call ESP now send. 
Um, receiving message is equally simple. So when a message is received by ESP now, it calls our receive callback. It gives us the MAC address that the message was received from, gives us the data in the message and the length of the message. So we can easily turn that into a string or just um, set up a buffer with the ESP now max data length, which is 250 bytes, plus an extra byte for a null terminator. We'll copy the contents of the message into our buffer, and then we'll just make sure that we have a null terminator on the end. We can format the MAC address into a nice string and print that on the serial port, or in the case of the Helltech with the OLED display, we can show that on our screen. And then we just check to see if the buffer contains the message on, in which case we change the state of our LED. Or if the message is contained off, we'll change the state of our LED to false. And then we just set our LED on or off, depending on the message that was received. Um, now obviously, sending strings is not the most efficient way of communicating when you only have 250 bytes to send. So if you are building this in a more production environment, you'd build a binary message and use that to communicate. But it's a very simple way of broadcasting messages from one ESP to a set of other ESP devices. So let's look at how you can actually send messages to a specific device. So I'll show that working and then we'll walk through the code, which is very similar to the broadcast code, but um, it's still equally simple. So let's move on to sending peer-to-peer -peer messages. So I've downloaded a new sketch to the bottom device, and I've set it up so that it only sends messages to this device on the right. So if I push the button on the right-hand device, this is still set up for broadcast mode. So it will transmit messages to all of the devices and they'll act upon it and turn their LEDs on and off. But if I push the button on this bottom device, the message is only received by this device on the right. So the other devices do not receive any of the messages. So this is an example of a direct connection that's peer-to-peer -peer between the bottom device and the right-hand device. So click the button, only the right-hand device responds. So let's have a look at the code changes for this and then we'll do a quick summary of the ESP Now system. So the code changes are very minimal. All I've done is change from the broadcast address to the specific MAC address of the device I want to send the message to. So that's what we need to do to send a message to a specific device instead of broadcasting it. So let's summarize what we've learned about ESP now. So it enables multiple devices to communicate without using Wi-Fi. Now it's a proprietary protocol developed by Expressive. It uses the same spectrum as Wi-Fi, so 2.4 gigahertz. It can do broadcast or peer-to-peer -peer messaging. And it has a maximum message length of 250 bytes. Now, you can enable encryption on your messages. Uh, there's an important thing to remember that you need to set up the key on both sides, so on both the sender and the receiver, in order for encryption to work. And then finally, I think after this um, simple demonstration, you'll agree that it's uh, a fairly simple and easy to use uh, system that's been developed. So that's uh, ESP Now in a nutshell. I, uh, I hope you found this um, video useful. If you did, uh, please hit the subscribe button and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, if you subscribe, you'll be first in line for new videos. And also it gives me a nice boost to know that people are watching and enjoying the videos. 
So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.